system conversion. We all kind of see these anti-siphon valves or even the inline valves in our irrigation system. So when we're, whenever we're going to drip, our two main components we want to deal with is make sure you filter the, system, the water. When we're dealing with drips, much smaller orifices because instead of dealing with gallons per minute, we're dealing with gallons per hour. So real tiny orifices on our emitters. So make sure you put a good filter on there. These here are really easy to service. You can just open this cap here, turn it on, it'll flush out whatever's inside there. Or if you want to go a step further, you can just unscrew this cap. And they all got these nice little filter elements. These are replaceable. And these just keep out any sediment that comes in the water line. A lot of times bugs like to crawl on these anti siphon caps, keep it from going down and clogging your emitters. Second uh, important feature would be our pressure regulator. It's very important we bring down our pressure. Most of the residential, like Richard said in LA, they're doing 110, 120 PSI. Um, I've seen as high as 150 in some residential sites. And so our drip system, most drip tubing, like the poly tubing, the black tubing, is rated about 60 PSI. So we want to bring below 65 PSI. These <laughs> Hendrickson's are really good, like Richard told you. This one's you can put before the valve if you had to. Um, there's also like these sanitary jerseys, really good, but these have to go after the valve. They can't handle the constant pressure. Drip systems, we're going to go below, below 40 PSI normally. They range anywhere from 8 to 15, 25, 30, 40 PSI regulators. Just depends on your dripper you're going to use. If you're going to use one like he has on this here, this Rainbird one here, it's a pressure compensating emitter. They have little check valves inside them. You need like 15 PSI just to open the emitter. So if you had a 20 PSI regulator on here, you barely have enough pressure to open the system. You might have issues with, it, with drippers down the line not opening, not flowing a consistent rate. So if you were to go with a pressure compensating, you might want to go with like a 30 or 40 pound regulator. And then we just convert. Do you need to go from here to your PVC out to if you have a long run or drip tube right off of here? Here we got our same setup. If you had a hose bib, some little area you just want to convert over, say, hey, I got a hose bib right here, I got a little planter next to my front doorway, a couple plants I want to deal with. This is a real nice hydro rain battery timer. Batteries last well over a year from what I've come across. Just two double A's. And um, we just got several different setups here. Of uh, different type of emitters. Um, same thing here. We got our anti-siphon port. This is a atmospheric vacuum breaker here. This is just really many any siphonage. If there was any any water coming back. Pressure regulator. This is a Hendrickson. This is a host thread. Go around to our host thread here. A little T filter. This one's made by um, Global Irrigation. Little filter element and clean out service every now and then. Um, rule of thumb: Whenever you install a system. If you're going to maintain it as an installer or your homeowners, check after the first month, see how dirty the water is. You may not have to service it for a year, if ever. I've had some in place, like this larger size, where five years and they work fine. Um, so then we got our poly tubing here going off to our different types of emitters. We'll turn this on here and show you the different types of emitters. So you can hear that click on in a second here. So there's no wires or anything, you just it's all battery options. So drip options, we've got several options, just got a few here. This little spray head, see if we can get the camera wet. This one's adjustable. You can see how far they'll spray you get to a big area. However, you turn them off, you have an area where you might put, plant your color seasonally and say, hey, I don't want water all the time. These have a really nice little valve on the side here, hey, I'm, I can shut this off. When I come back next year, put my color again. Turn it back on. A couple other options like this little shrubbler. You go from slow drip all the way to a bigger stream. Cover a big area. These are put out quite a bit of water. These will go anywhere from zero to 20 gallons per hour. So these will put out a lot of water if you have something that needs quite a bit of water. Here's another similar one, but this one's a spray. You can see the different spray pattern. Yeah. And then you got these are your standard little flag emitters. These will be your basic emitter. This is a one gallon. This one here has this little flag. You can pull out and flush it out if you have a plugged emitter. Good emitter. You want something a little better than that one though, you can go with like these Bowsmith 
See, it's a lot bigger area. These have little diaphragms in there, keep them from clogging up. Little sand or debris comes in there, the diaphragm just stretches open up, flushes itself out. So if you want a little better matter, you don't have to worry about clogging. I put these in seven, eight years ago in some sites and run? not having issues. About 52, 53 cents. That's so, reasonable. Yeah, compared to well, 20 the cents where these clog. Yeah, these don't clog. Little bit of meters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 20 cents for a standard meter, 50 cents for the non-clogging. When you're dealing with some of these nice plants, 120, 200 dollars for a plant. Yeah. What's Absolutely. another 25 cents for an emitter? It's worth that little Bo Smith one. Is really, really good. I've heard.